bacteriology of water or bacteriological examination of water so this is one of the practical where we can check the quality of the water that human being consumes consumes in order to make sure that the water is safe to drink so this examination of water mostly it is done for the to make sure that the water is free from chemical substances and pathogenic microorganisms and we should also make sure that drinking water should not only be safe but also pleasant to drink that is like uh, it should be clear colorless and devoid of this agreeable taste of smell and uh, this drinking water is we should see that it is liable to be contaminated with sewage or other excreted materials which may cause intestinal or other systemic infections and the <coughs> hazards and the hazards of water pollution are classified into mostly two broad groups that is biological and chemical so in case of uh, biological hazards they are due to infective agents which may lead to waterborne diseases and in case of chemical pollutants it includes poisonous chemical substances industrial or agricultural waste so these are the two broad groups for this hazards of water pollution <coughs> So next we have is the bacterial flora in water like we have bacterial flora in our own body we also have uh, bacterial flora in water so the bacteria mostly found in water can be divided into three categories so the first we have is the natural water bacteria then we have soil bacteria and then sewage bacteria so under natural water bacteria the main the <coughs> the bacteria we have here is Micrococcus, then we have Cirrhosia, Flavobacterium, Pseudomonas, and Acentobacter. So these are few of the natural bacteria. Then soil bacteria it can be washed in into water. Example like Enterobacter, Aerogenes, then Enterobacter, Coasi, and then Bacillus subtilis then sewage bacteria this can again be uh, divided into two categories that is intestinal bacteria which can be through uh, sewage and then sewage bacteria proper so in the first that is intestinal bacteria it includes escherichia coli enter enterococcus faecalis then uh, clostridium perfringens salmonella typhi and vibrio cholera and though other organisms include in sewage bacteria proper is proteus and clostridium sporogenes so these are the few of the bacterial flora present in water then few waterborne disease or waterborne pathogens that can cause the disease we have here in case of bacteria we have vibrio cholera escherichia coli salmonella typhi etc these can cause any bacterial uh, infection or disease then you have in case of viral it includes hepatitis a virus hepatitis e virus then poliomyelitis virus and rotavirus then in case of protozoal or parasitic infection or pathogens we have entamoeba histolytica giardia lamblia Lantidum coli and cryptosporidium and isospora. Then, in case of helminthic waterborne pathogens, we have Ascaris lumbricoides, and then Enterobus vermicularis, and Trichuris trichura. So, these are few of the waterborne pathogens mentioned here. Then, next we have is the examination part. So, out here we will collect the water sample so collection can be done through sun through different methods the first we have is sampling from a tap or pumped outlet where <coughs> this 
water sample where this uh, water sample can be collected right we will clean the tap or pumped outlet from outside and then the tap is turn at maximum flow rate and let the water flow for 5 minutes after that we will open the stopper then fill the bottle and replace the stopper so that is how we collect the uh, sample from tap or pumped outlet then the next we have is sampling of water from a reservoir that includes uh, streams rivers lakes and tanks so how we will collect the sample from here water sample out here the stopper is removed and the bottle is submerged to a depth of about 20 cm with mouth facing upwards if there is a current then the bottle should face the water current so that is that is how we collect the sample from a reservoir so the next method or the next collection is from a duck well sampling from a duck well out here a stone is tied with the sampling bottle then a clean cord of suitable length is tied with the bottle and lowered to the required depth when the bottle is filled we will pull it out and stopper it then the bottle should not touch the sides of the well at any cost at any time so that is how we collect the water samples mostly it these water samples are to be collected in heat sterilized glass bottles of 230 ml with ground glass stoppers protected by craft paper so to neutralize the bacteriocidal effect of chlorine in water a crystal of sodium thiosulfate is introduced into the bottle prior to sterilization so that is about the collection of water samples then before we analyze before we examine this sample we will need but we will need to know the transport transportation part so how we transport this sample so the water bottles should be wrapped in a craft paper then the water samples should be properly labeled with details of the source time and date of collection these are the basic things we need to follow then this should be delivered to the lab as as quickly as possible and if there is delay where delay is anticipated the bottles should be kept on ice preferably in an ice box and protected from light and these samples should be processed immediately so that is how we transport this uh, sample water samples then coming to the methods of analysis we have different different methods out here i'm not going to discuss in details but later on in upcoming videos in different different videos i'll be talking about each and every method uh, in detail so here we have four methods the first one is the presumptive coliform count then we have differential coliform count then detection of fecal streptococci and clostridium perfringens and membrane filtration method or membrane filtration test so these are the different different methods we can analyze or examine the water quality so in short i'll be talking about each and every method but detail will be explained in upcoming videos so first we will see the presumptive coliform count here a multiple tube method is generally used for estimation of probable number of coliform bacilli in water by this method the most probable number of coliform organisms are detected in 100 ml of water so we will have media we will need a media that is both double strength and single strength McConkie broth in bottles or tubes containing Durham's tube for indication of gas production 
like this media contains bromocresol blue as the indicator which will indicate the color change right so that is about the media required then coming to the steps or the procedure how we, how we will proceed with this presumptive coliform count so we will measure amount of water samples and then add by sterile graduate pipettes we will add 50 ml of water to one bottle of 50 ml double strength medium then next we will add 10 ml of water each to 5 tubes of 10 ml double strength medium then 1 ml of water each to 5 tubes of 5 ml single strength medium then 0.1 ml of water each of 5 test tubes of 5 ml single strength medium so these are the different steps involved then after we kept all this we will inoculate the tubes or bottles <coughs> sorry we will incubate <coughs> we will incubate these tubes or bottles at 37 degrees celsius for around 48 hours and <coughs> an estimate of coliform count per 100 ml is made then we will check for the whether the tubes are showing acid or gas production using the probability table then the presumptive coliform count of 0 1 to 3 4 to 10 and more than 10 per 100 ml is interpreted as excellent satisfactory suspicious and unsatisfactory respectively so for example if we had gas in the first three tubes and gas only in one tube of the second series but none in the last three test tubes your test would be read as three one zero so we have a table where it indicates that the mpn for this reading would be 43 this means that the the this particular sample of water would have approximately 43 organisms per 100 ml of with a 95 percent probability of there being between 7 and 2 210 organisms keep in mind that the mpn figure of 43 is only a statistical uh, probability figure then next we have this other method we have is the differential coliform count out here we also call it the Hman's test this test is done to confirm that the coliform bacilli detected in the presumptive tests are Escherichia coli so after the usual presumptive test the subcultures subcultures are made from all the positive tubes or bottles to fresh tubes of single strength McConkie broth along with Durham, Durham's tube then these are incubated at 44 degrees celsius in water bath then examine them after 24 hours then those tubes showing gas in Durham's tube contain it will indicate that they contain Escherichia coli so the confirmation of this organism Escherichia coli is made by plating on a solid medium and indoor production test so that is for the differential coliform count so next we have is the detection of fecal streptococci and clostridium perfringens so there are two <coughs> categories or two groups that is fecal streptococci and clostridium perfringens you can detect the fecal of streptococci and clostridium clostridium perfringens so here 
their presence in water provides useful confirmatory evidence of the fecal pollution in doubtful cases. So first is the fecal streptococci out here. Subcultures are made from positive tubes or bottles and presumptive coliform tests into the test into the test tubes containing 5 ml of glucose azide broth and then we incubate at 45 degrees celsius for uh, 18 hours then the presence of acid in the medium indicates the presence of enterococcus faecalis then for further confirmation it can further can uh, confirmation can be done by plating onto like conky agar medium so that is for the fecal streptococci then in case of clostridium perfringens here the water sample is inoculated in litmus milk medium and incubated anaerobically at 37 degrees celsius for around 5 days and then after that a typical stomach cloth reaction with acidity confirms the presence of clostridium perfringens so that's all for regarding the um, detection of fecal streptococci and clostridium perfringens next method we have is the membrane filtration method this method i will discuss in details in the other section of the video out here i'll just give a short uh, short explanation so the membrane filtration method it is a measured volume of water is filtered through a uh, membrane which retains the bacteria on its surface then the membrane is placed on a suitable medium and incubated so that bacteria grows into the colonies on its upper surface then the number of colonies is counted and the bacterial content of the water is calculated